Today we're speedrunning Plague Inc, and we're going to be beating every plague on the hardest difficulty, Mega Brutal. So to start out, we're going with Bacteria, and right away a trick you'll see me doing is as soon as we see a pop-up, I'm going to press 3 to make the speed faster, and then we can go into this menu while the game is still playing. And along with it playing, it's also still going to pop up orange and red bubbles, and that means we can pop them while we're in this menu because we have the genetic code on Metabolic Hijack. Then for our other genetic codes, we have Creationist, which decreases the chance of your plague mutating. And that's good since we can prevent making our plague lethal too soon. Aquasite, which increases the chance of your plague spreading by sea, which is really important for places like Greenland. Extremophile, which gives your plague a minor bonus in all environments. And Symptostasis, which makes it so that symptom costs don't increase, but the plague is easier to cure. Now for our upgrades, you'll see that at the beginning we're completely focusing on infectivity, so we're going for a bunch of symptoms that do that right at the start. And then we're going to focus on a couple transmission sources, starting with Bird 1, because that's really going to help help us get past land borders and go into new places, but after that we want to completely focus on air and water. This is because islands like Greenland and the Caribbean are extremely hard to get to, and a lot of the times those are going to be the places that ruin your run. So we want to make sure we have as good of a chance to infect them as soon as possible. Now we want to get some abilities like Cold Resistance 1 and 2, which are really good for places that are cold, like Russia, Greenland, all kinds of different places. And then we're also going to get Drug Resistance 1 and 2, which is really nice for the wealthier places like the US in Canada before buying another transmission perk, which is extreme bioaerosol, or I think that's how you say it. But basically, it just makes our air travel and water travel as good as possible. But right there, I saw that a boat finally infected Greenland, which means we can focus on lethality. The reason we wanted to wait is if we kill too many people too fast, then places like Greenland are going to close down their ports, and once their ports are closed, if no one's infected in the country, they are completely safe and there's no way for us to get them. Yeah, if you've ever played this game, you know how painful places like Greenland are. But it's really nice when you can actually start killing, because we're going to get DNA a lot faster, and this is where the game starts getting really fun, as soon as there are no longer any healthy people left in the world, and you just watch the rest die. And as soon as bacteria finishes up, we're going into our next plague, Virus. Virus is a lot harder to control since it mutates a lot, meaning it gets new symptoms even when we don't buy them. This can be good when you want it, but it can also give us lethal symptoms, so that's what we have to watch out for and how we're going to change up our strategy. And our first change is going to be the genetic code, where we're going to keep metabolic hijack, aquasite, extremophile, and symptostasis, but we'll replace creationist with base oxidization, which makes your plague able to mutate transmissions. You'll actually see it right there as we got livestock one, and now we're going to focus on transmissions. If we get symptoms that increase infectivity right now, then we'll be more likely to mutate symptoms that give us lethality. So instead, we're going to completely ignore symptoms at the beginning of this run, which does make us go a little bit slower, but it's a lot safer, especially for a run like this. If you watch speedruns for only virus, they go for symptoms right away and are a lot riskier, but that's because they can afford the reset. For my speedrun, I'm trying to beat every single plague without losing a single time, so we gotta use slightly different strategies to make sure we can actually survive. It doesn't have the best feeling to watch the game go by pretty slowly, but once we start getting these planes and boats out, you'll see that we're getting a lot more DNA, so it really ramps up after just a bit of waiting. Our real hope is as soon as possible, just like last time, we hit all the different islands, so we don't have to worry about that going into the future. The ones that really always worry me and the ones that have ended runs before are Greenland, Iceland, and the Caribbean, but I'm sure there are more run enders than that. We just gotta hope we get lucky. But now, after the transmissions, you'll see that now I'm focusing on getting a couple more of these symptoms. Once we have those, we can also get our resistances. Cold resistance and drug resistance are the ones that we pretty much get for every single type of plague, and drug resistance usually takes a bit longer than cold resistance takes to get, just because it's kind of expensive. But there, I actually saw that Greenland just got hit, which means we're good to go and we can completely start getting symptoms. Especially because when we get lethality, like I said before, we're going to get even more DNA. Now we don't want to get too much lethality right away because if we kill people too fast, then they're not going to be able to get infected first. And if we kill all of our infected people in a country before the others can get infected, that just means we're going to lose right there. So got to be a bit careful about that. But once we start getting a little bit farther in and there are no healthy people left in the world, this is where we can just completely get every single other type of symptom and we're pretty much just waiting for people to die. And between the combo of bacteria and virus, a lot of my runs actually die here, so we're lucky enough to finally continue. We just have to make sure they're not going to be able to get any cures. I mean, at this point, everybody is literally dying. We're set to destroy humanity. And there we go. That's the Earth. Time to go on to the next one, Fungus, which is also a pretty hard one to survive. And I 
I mean hard for my run to survive, not the people, because in Fungus, its special trait is that it's really hard to get a fungus to travel long distances without special effort. And because of that, we're gonna replace all of our genetic code, so we have ATP boost, which gives bonus DNA at the beginning, genetic mimic, which makes our plague hard to cure, suppression, which makes the plague more likely to cross a closed land border, herbophile, which gives the plague a bonus in urban environments, and pathostasis, which makes it so ability costs don't increase, but the plague is easier to cure. The biggest change visually though is gonna be getting rid of metabolic hijack, since I can no longer just sit there in the menu and actually have to pop bubbles. Still, it's worth it for the ATP boost to get us going faster. Now in an only fungus speedrun, to go fast it comes down to getting lucky with spore burst, which releases a burst of spores in the air to infect a new country. You have a total of 12 spore bursts and two spore eruptions, which releases spores in a few different countries, but this strategy is another one that completely relies on luck, so we can't use it for our speedrun. And that means instead, we wanna use our spore burst more strategically, which does make this have a longer start, but it's worth it so I don't have to reset for the next 10 days. So, as you saw for transmission, we only got bird 1 and water 1 and 2, and we will get some more transmission things later in the run, but for now, that's all we want. And then we also want to upgrade our cold resistance, heat resistance, and drug resistance. This is really just the long setup part of the run, so when we actually get the symptoms and stuff going, we'll have enough time before the people can get done with a cure. So, while we're waiting for things to speed up, let me tell you about why we've been choosing our starting location, Saudi Arabia. This is a really good starting location, since it's close to Europe, Asia, and Africa, while also having both an airport and seaport, so yeah, you can probably guess why it's so good to start out in. I remember when I casually played this game back in middle school, I would always choose Greenland because it's sometimes really hard to affect, but Saudi Arabia will get you going a lot faster, so it's worth it for the speedrun. And in fact, we're actually going to use Saudi Arabia for our starting location for 9 out of the 11 plagues, but I'll explain the other two once we get there. Anyways, it looks like our fungus is finally starting to expand, and it will even more so now that we have heat resistance. As you saw for the last two plagues, we don't really use heat resistance that often. It's really cold resistance and drug resistance that are the ones that are crucial for these mega brutal speedruns. But the reason we get heat resistance right here is just so we can help spread the fungus faster because as you've been seeing so far, it is extremely slow. And since we're starting to spread right into Africa, the heat resistance will come in helpful with us hopefully going just a little bit faster. And now it's really just a waiting game because we have to get 25 DNA points to get drug resistance too. Again, it is crucial for those places that are the wealthier countries. So we really need to hope that it can get here kind of fast. We are starting to get a couple of these bubbles, but there's not too much you can do to actually speed this up. It's really just a waiting game and hoping that we'll get there eventually. Please, Fungus, I cannot wait until we're done with this plague type. I remember when I was younger too, I could never do Fungus. I just think I didn't have the patience for it. Even when I didn't used to play on Mega Brutal, I can see why younger me couldn't handle this. I really wanted to get that fast gameplay, you know what I'm talking about? You know, me hearing that sentence made me realize I probably was always a speedrunner. <laughs> I just didn't know it yet. But okay, Drug Resistance 2 is finally acquired, and now we actually get to the exciting part of the speedrun, because once once we get at least 6 DNA, we can start using Spore Burst. We're going to want to use 6 of these at a time, and then we go and click on all of those. I actually paused the game for just a second to make sure I could get that, and do a Spore Eruption, and already we just got onto Greenland. That's actually really good luck, but it's not the most crucial thing. It's just nice to get. We're also going to get some genetic hardening. That's going to make it so that the people can't come up with a cure fast enough, especially because right away we're going to start making our Plague Lethal. At this point, we've waited so long, there's no point in waiting any longer. We're going straight into lethality and getting some more things that will make it harder for the people to cure this plague. Because there are certain symptoms that make curing the plague harder, like paralysis and coma. And these are nice to get since you get a symptom along with making it harder for scientists, instead of something like genetic hardening, which only makes the plague harder to cure. Both are important for the speedrun, but I like these a little better. And of course, since we're getting more lethality, that means we're going to get even more DNA with each person dying. So yeah, it's just something that keeps adding up. That means we can get more symptoms, but I'm not going to focus too much on symptoms. I will get one more right there, but then we're actually going to focus on a couple of transmission types with bird two and also the rat one, just so we can focus on raising the infectivity as much as possible. In that way, when we do our next spore burst, they'll be able to hit the remaining countries. And the way we can see if everything is going to plan is we'll do the spore burst there. It will hit like six countries. And then we're also going to use a spore eruption, which we see only hits three countries. And that means that there are no more that we can infect 
checked, so everything should be good to go. And now we can completely focus on our symptoms, but just like before in earlier speedruns, I don't want to raise the lethality too much because there are places that are barely infected. We can see Canada right here. They're going up at a fairly slow rate, but the thing about infectivity, as it starts slow, but then it gets higher and higher with time, so we don't have to worry about it too much. I'm just going to wait a bit, though. I really do have to hope right now, though, that they can't find a cure. That's the thing I'm the most worried about. I mean, we can do some stuff to prevent the cure if we need to, so we should be fine, but yeah, just got to be careful about that. Anyways, we saw that the map went completely red. First thing, of course, that we're going to take is total organ failure. That is the most lethal thing we can get, and right away, you can see the entire population is going down. I guess we're just looking at Iceland, but still, you know the entire population is going down. We don't got to get anything else. Our disease is now set to destroy the rest of humanity, and it really just is a ticking time bomb with how long these humans want to last until we finish out that part of the run and now on to the next plague. This plague is the Neurax worm which is a manipulative organism that burrows into the brain. How exactly that works, I have no idea, but the important part is that it allows us to control people's minds. But before getting into that, we're back to some old genetic code genes with metabolic hijack, genetic mimic, suppression, herbophile, and symptostasis. And you'll see that this new plague doesn't just give us new music but it also changes around the transmission, symptoms, and abilities from the normal ones since it's a special plague. And we're going to be focusing on transmission just to start out because of course we're trying to get that infectivity up, especially air travel. That's really nice. And also you should probably read what the descriptions of these things are. Like they're actually pretty funny, especially with the Nurax worm. But after that, all we need for transmission is going to be getting some birds as well. So we're kind of just waiting for a few of these guys. And eventually we will be able to get bird one before going over to our abilities and getting Trojan Plains one. And Trojan Plains by far is one of the nicest abilities for the Nurax Worm because we no longer have to rely on luck to hit areas like Greenland. Instead, every once in a while, we get to choose where one of our infected people goes and travels to. So we can tell them to go straight to Greenland and yeah, it's that easy. It's also a really nice ability because even if the airports are shut down, we can still do it. Don't really know how that makes sense, but I guess they hijack a plane or something like that. But of course that ability is not going to be enough to infect everybody by itself. So we also still do want to upgrade both our air and our water all the way. And then we can also get insects and rodents just to make sure that everybody gets infected at all times. And you're also going to see me go and get Iceland right there. Iceland, another place that is new notoriously awful before we're also getting cold resistance so we can deal with those cold countries and finally go on to symptoms. Now symptoms, the only one we really want is going to be the one that completely brainwashes people. We'll go towards this, which is devotion, and that's going to be nice, you know, making people like us better. But the one after that is transcendence. Transcendence forces the host into a permanent state of worship and acceptance, making the Nurax worm their new eternal god. So once we get this ability, we don't even have to worry about killing everybody. This is another win condition. Then we'll just focus on getting a lot more symptoms, making the Nurax worm harder to cure, and that's pretty much it. At this point, we're just waiting for everyone to get infected, and we're good to go. But one thing I should mention is for Transcendence, we really rushed to get there, and that's because when you play on Mega Brutal, there's something called Genetic Drift, and basically Genetic Drift makes symptom costs more expensive as more people get infected. This is only on Mega Brutal, and yeah, it really makes some of these annoying. The other things that happen for Mega Brutal is doctors invest in research and there are random medical checkups. So yeah, it's definitely the hardest difficulty. And so far, we've been doing pretty well. Next up, it's time for Parasite, which is unique in that it starts out with a higher level of severity. Severity is basically how likely people are to notice the disease and start researching a cure for it. So this game gives you abilities to make the plague less likely to be noticed that we won't be using at all. But for our genetic code, we'll be using Genetic Mimic, Aquasite, Herbophile, Symptostasis, and a new gene, Catalytic Switch, which gives extra DNA from popping the blue research bubbles. Now this one's going to be a pretty basic start, we're going into symptoms and trying to get our infectivity up as much as possible, getting things like rashes, coughing, all that sort of stuff. And we can also get cis hypersensitivity before going on to transmission. And right away, just like normal, we got to focus on our boats and our planes because those are going to be the fastest way to get things going. And like usual, we have to worry about the islands, which are always going to be harder to get to. And even though the severity is up a fair amount, it doesn't really matter, especially because we are speedrunning this game. Even if they do find out about the disease, there's not going to be too many people researching a cure against it, at least until we start killing. It is weird that 
that severity is even really a thing. Like, I've never seen it play any importance to any of the speedruns, and I never really paid attention to it when I played this game back in middle school. I already knew the basics. Hey, if you start killing people, that's when they're going to start working on the cure. And to be honest, before I started making this video, I didn't even know what severity was. I only learned what it was because I wanted to tell you. To be fair, if we weren't picking the perfect options and speedrunning, severity would be a bit more important. But right now, as long as I do everything correct, we should be good to go. But you're seeing a pretty basic start. We're going to get both the cold resistance, a little bit of heat resistance, and of course our drug resistance. We're pretty much always going for the start because it's just good. It just works. Why not? We're also getting a ton of different airplanes and places going around. But of course, I want to get this drug resistance as soon as possible so we can start hitting the other things. And we want to get genetic hardening. The world on the parasite does find a cure much faster than it does for other diseases. So that is something to worry about. We need to make sure we do this fast enough so the world cannot catch up to us. Also, this is really annoying because the price for genetic hardening too keeps going up. I'm not sure if that's genetic drift or something else because I'm pretty sure genetic drift is only supposed to be for symptoms, but I could be wrong about that. Anyways, now we just got to get our other things. I do want to get my infectivity up with that guy. It does start killing some people a little bit more, but we're just kind of hoping. Okay, there we go. Greenland did get got. You know, sometimes you just got to pray that you're going to see a boat right there and hopefully not lose your entire run. But of course, we're going to get things like coma, which is going to help because of course it makes the cure slow down a lot. And now we get to see where catalytic switch starts coming in handy because whenever we see these blue research bubbles, we're just going to pop them. And first of all, it's going to make their research speed slower. But because of our gene, we're also going to get extra points, which is going to be nice just making sure they do not solve this. And I almost feel bad about talking trash about severity at this point because, yeah, the cure is progressing extremely fast. I guess maybe I shouldn't have talked too much trash, but we can also see that Morocco is not that infected. They are getting there, but we don't want to start killing them just yet just to make sure that nothing goes wrong. But at this point, I will just get my total organ failure as well as getting genetic shuffle. And basically, that just just buys us more time, gets rid of some of the progress on the cure. And one thing to mention is after you kill enough people in a specific country, those scientists will no longer be looking for a cure. So that's really what we're hoping for. We can see that South Africa just went into anarchy. They're no longer going to be helping with the cure and it's progressing pretty well. We should be completely fine. The US president just taken ill. So yeah, we should be more than fine. We have enough time and they are not going to be able to finish this cure. Might as well get another high lethality symptom. And it looks like the planet, yeah, no one's even trying to look for a cure at this point. Everything is red and it really just is about slowly waiting for things to happen. I mean, the cure is still going up by the smallest amount. There's still a group of scientists. How did that just get up to 95? That was just a jump. Still, we should be fine. I don't know what those scientists just figured out. They almost had me, but unfortunately for them, that is our next one done and we're on to Prion. Now, Prion is our last fairly basic plague before we get to the ones that really differentiate in strategy. But how Prion works is it gives you more ways to stall a potential cure, but also takes longer to kill. And for this one, we'll go with the genetic code combo of ATP boost, genetic mimic, aquasite, herbophile, and symptostasis. And for our starting symptoms, we're going with what you would expect, just the things that are going to give us the highest level of infectivity for the lowest cost of DNA. So we're just going to save up a little bit here. Then we can get the combo of coughing, pneumonia, and sneezing, which is always a good thing to give us more infectivity. Then we have our other speedrun regulars like nausea, vomiting, rash, sweating, cysts, hypersensitivity, and abscesses. You know, I'm pretty sure that's actually the first time I actually told you what the symptom names are instead of just taking them and letting you see what I pick but that's because there wasn't as much time earlier in the run but at this point I've explained so much stuff so there's not really too much more to explain until we make it to our next plague and once we make it there there's gonna be a lot but for now you already know what we're doing for early game next we're gonna focus on boat and air travel but we're gonna get two upgrades for boat and only one for air this run biggest reason for that of course is gonna be Greenland since it only has a boat port and air travel shouldn't be that bad especially with some of the stuff we're gonna get later it's always it's kind of awkward how slow early game is but once you get going you'll see we're getting tons of planes going literally everywhere and we're getting so many points at the exact same time so once it starts it really does start now we're heading over to abilities and can you guess the abilities that we're going to get if you said cold resistance and drug resistance yeah you're right we always need them while we're getting a couple abilities though i should mention the new ability that's on there which is called neuroatrophy 
There are three levels of this ability, all that we'll get later in the run, and it's a neural breakdown which causes a breakdown in concentration, and that makes complex tasks harder. That's the language that Plague Inc. uses, but it's just the fancy way of saying it'll slow down research speed since it takes longer to kill everyone with the prion. Also you'll see right there, I thankfully caught that we got a mutation that raised our lethality. We really do not want to kill people until we're ready, especially for how long this is going to take to actually do the killing, and if we start out too early and it's not really taking care of too many people, it's going to ruin our entire plans. If I did not catch that there, we probably wouldn't have won this run, so that's fun. But now we're back to upgrading symptoms, where we'll get just a few right now. We have insomnia, which makes people less productive, paranoia, which makes victims less likely to seek treatment or cooperate with others, skin lesions, which give us a ton of infectivity, and then it's time to wait for just a tiny bit until we hopefully hit Greenland, before using our saved up points to get paralysis, which raises lethality and makes the plague significantly harder to cure, coma, which does the same thing, and then seizures, pulmonary edema, and necrosis to raise our infectivity and lethality to a good level. After that, because of how bad lethality is with this type of plague, we just really have to hope that we can kill everybody off before the researchers can take our plague out, so yeah, that's kind of scary. But of course, like I said before, we get three different levels of neural atrophy, which are really going to help us with just making sure nothing bad happens. I also want to be sure that I click every single one of these blue bubbles, because yeah, we're trying to slow this down as much as possible. Even if we don't have the perk which gives us extra DNA, it is worth it just to make sure that we do not let this cure get too far. It's a pretty weird dynamic because usually at this point we're getting so much DNA and we need to make sure we don't get too many symptoms and kill our people too fast so it can actually infect everybody. But with how this is going right now, we have infected everybody on the planet already and it's just about hoping we can squeeze out a tiny bit of lethality before we actually get that cure made. This is probably the most stressful part of this run because I mean the world's cure is ticking and it's going pretty fast. It's getting about a percentage every second and there are ways we can stall it but I would rather use my DNA on getting some more lethality if that is possible. But while we are waiting and watching this beautiful red earth, I might as well say if you've been enjoying this video, make sure you subscribe and leave a like on the video. I'd really appreciate it. Honestly, it doesn't help you out too much because if you like my videos, you're probably going to see them in your YouTube recommendations anyways, but it helps me out with the YouTube algorithm, so I'd really appreciate it. But yeah, enough of that. Thanks for watching. Finally though, the death counter is going up by a lot. The longer people are infected, the more likely they are to die, and that means we're also getting a ton of DNA so we can get total organ failure, which is going to raise our lethality up a ton. I also am getting really worried about this cure right now, but like I said before, there are ways to stop it if we do need so with a genetic reshuffle, which will just make their cure lose like 10% of it. So at this point, I'm really not worried. A lot of these governments are going into anarchy. They have no idea what to do. Honestly, they should have given up a while ago. And guess what world? I'm not going to stop here. We still have five more plagues to do, and these ones are going to get really good. Kind of crazy though, how long we've spent on this screen with the entire world being infected and we've just been waiting for people to die but i guess that's just kind of what prion is you just have to wait way too long but we really are getting down to the last infected people i'll try to get some more lethality if i can but there's not too much to really do people are dying the new president of the usa was selected they're definitely going to get replaced Actually, you probably can't replace them if all the other candidates are dead. But we are finally coming down to the last few people, and I'm pretty excited because our next virus is going to be really cool. It's called the Necrovirus, and it basically turns people into zombies, or doesn't even basically. It just turns people into zombies. And not only can we turn people into zombies, but we can also control those zombies. So for the Necrovirus, we have Catalytic Switch, Aquasite, Herbophile, Darwinist, which increases the chance of the plague mutating, and Splice Activation, which makes active abilities cost less DNA to use. And as you can see from the menus, we're in a completely different set of upgrades again, but we'll start out with Transmissions. Here we want to get Zoonotic Shift, which increases infectivity, mutation chance, and makes cross-species infection possible, but increases future research speed. Then we'll take Rodent 1 to spread to rats and hit urban areas, Blood 1 to hit poor countries more, Air 1 to spread by planes, and the most expensive one here, Segmented Genome. 
This transmission type makes the virus split its genome into smaller molecules, increasing the chance of mutation. Now, one thing to mention is even though this is the zombie virus, none of our victims actually are zombies yet. Right now, we're just spreading around a random disease. It isn't really doing too much, pretty much like most of the plague games. We have to get a certain symptom to turn the people into zombies. And the nice thing about when we get that is it's going to make the cure obsolete. So this plague really is one where it starts out pretty slow. You just have to wait and get all your things up. But once it starts, it really starts, especially Especially because we're going to be using those zombies to do some terrifying things at least for everybody else not for me and you'll also see that we haven't gotten anything to do with boats and that's because finally we don't have to worry about greenland the place that has ruined so many of my runs it's time to get our revenge because we can actually control the zombies once we get a certain ability but we'll come back to that in a bit for now we'll pop all of these and we just need a little bit more dna points and I'm pretty sure we can get segmented genome. That should be good. And here's where things are really going to start picking up just like you would normally see in a plague game. But we're also just kind of going to hang out now. We're not really worried about getting too many more symptoms. We're more worried about just spreading it and our zombies can already do that on their own. So we're pretty much just going to wait until the world has about 75% done with the cure because once we get that one symptom, they're not going to be able to do anything once we turn these people into zombies. So this really is just a good chance to get all the bubbles that we need. They haven't even started working on the cure. I don't even know what they're doing. I guess they don't realize this is going to be a literal zombie virus yet, but hey, at least be a little bit more proactive about it. It seems like a pretty bad time, and we're just hoping we can get as much stuff mutated as possible because I don't want to spend my points on it right now, but I will take the extras as we get them. I was also kind of hoping we get more blue research bubbles because we do have catalytic switch, which again gives us extra DNA if we pop those, so it's kind of unlucky we aren't getting any. I mean, it really doesn't matter too much. We are getting a ton of DNA, but that would just be a little bit better. I'm also pretty happy with how this has spread so far. We've got to do a few islands that are usually problems, even though we haven't invested too much in transmission, so I will take that. But now we're seeing the world is getting pretty far, so I'm gonna buy our next abilities. But then I realized, oh, I have auto pause stopped because we were in that one menu. So they did get up to 100%, but thankfully before they were able to do anything with it, we were able to get cytopathic reanimation, which turns people into zombies. And then the next one, anaerobic resuscitation, which destroys their higher brain processes and personality so we can completely control them. Then for the symptoms after that, basically if you take the right branch, it's going to make the zombies stronger and able to deal with threats better. And if you go to the left, it helps us infect more people, but we're mostly going to be focusing on the right. And the zombie virus is going to spread extremely fast, especially in the countries where it's popular. We'll also get these new bubbles, which give us more points. Not really sure what those are, but hey, they work. I'll take extra points. And what we're really focused on is just making sure that our zombies are strong enough so far so then we can focus on getting a couple of abilities and those abilities we'll be getting are all in the vein of horde instinct which lets zombies form hordes to travel across land and water and attack new lands. Then we can upgrade it with things like horde mentality to send a larger amount of zombies over and structured travel to increase their travel speed and direction of travel. And this is especially important for two reasons. The first is that a new organization called ZCOM has been made to try to fight back against the zombies. So we wanna crush their bases as soon as they show up by sending zombies over there. And the second is that if we leave our zombies in a country with no more unaffected people, then they'll start dying off so we can send them to a new country to prevent that. We're obviously not gonna save all of our zombies because that'd be way too much work, but we just wanna make sure that they can kill humanity before they die off themselves. But ZCOM, especially on Mega Brutal, is really strong. Sometimes we have to send multiple different hordes of zombies over, so we're gonna focus on also upgrading our people a little bit more just to make them stronger, less likely to be killed, and also able to beat people down faster. Now, as we take more countries, obviously they won't be able to establish ZCOM bases there, so it is important to hit as many countries as possible and if there's a country without ZCOM it's just going to be easier to take than one with ZCOM. But this is probably a pretty good chance to show you just the power of our zombies at this point so I might as well try to take Canada where we're going to go right there always send his people from the USA and right away we have killed like everybody so we might as well go to Greenland as well hit those different islands. It is so nice that we don't have to rely on chance. I love when you have the ability to just send people over and we're going to have this ability for more of our plagues especially once we get to the last two ones. So I'm excited for those. We just have to survive until then. 
and hopefully not get any bad luck. Obviously, there still are a couple countries that we still have to get, mostly just on the islands fronts. So those are always going to be the hardest ones. And there are some countries that are really hanging on. They're trying their best not to get taken down by the zombies. We all know what's going to happen, though. And we can just send zombies as we need over there, so they can't really do too much. We've done so much damage to the world at this point that ZCOM isn't even trying to make any more bases. I'm pretty sure they made, like, two or just a few of them, and it was kind of embarrassing. I don't even know why they tried if they weren't going to try a bit harder, but we'll go for the Caribbean, another place that usually is pretty hard to get. My zombies are really starting to die off now, so I'm kind of looking for the last country. I think it's right there in the Philippines, but you can see that many of my countries have no more zombies. There are only specific places I can send people from, so we're going to have to be kind of strategic sending the zombies from one to the other because they can't skip over countries. They have to go through them, but now on the map, we can see that we are missing nobody. It's just about waiting for the zombies to do their job. Hurry up, guys. I'm trying to get to the next thing. Your dead has destroyed all of humanity. That's what we like to see. And that's our next victory. Time to go on to our final four plagues, starting with the nanovirus, which is the plague you use if you want to do an any percent speedrun for this game. The plague is a nanobot with the ability to replicate itself that was accidentally released from a lab. And now scientists are trying to shut it down by broadcasting a kill code to deactivate the robots. Because of this, it's known from the beginning of the run that the nanobots are here, and cure research starts at the beginning of the game. But since we have that extra challenge, the game also gives us reduced symptom costs, better stats, and more methods to slow cure research. Now for our genetic code, we're going with the trustworthy combo of ATP boost, genetic mimic, Aquasite, Herbophile, and Symptostasis. And in general, for our starting strategy, you'll see that I got a lot of symptoms to increase infectivity, along with some symptoms that'll also slow research, like coma, and we aren't worried about controlling lethality since cure research is happening already anyways. We'll also get one of the nanobots' special abilities, Code Fragment Interception, which hacks fragments of the cure broadcast and disrupts the signal, slowing future broadcasts. And you'll see, even though we don't have that much lethality, our severity is very high, so now it's time to go for a little bit more transmission, like getting air travel, water travel, just trying to hit those islands before everything starts to close down. It really would make sense if the world just decided to close everything down right away as soon as they learned about this, but I guess you can't really shut down the world just because of one small research mistake. They really are going to regret that though. I guess they won't have time to regret it though because they'll be dead. And also you are seeing that research speed is going up at a really crazy rate, but we can't take a break and worry about it too much. We got to get our transmission up and just hope we can get enough infectivity before we focus on slowing down the cure a little bit more. And thankfully it paid off since we just got a ton of red bubbles, which will allow us to get more code segment interception to slow down future broadcasts, replication factory overload, which significantly boosts infectivity for the the next few weeks and radical elements stabilized to make some genetic protections against the kill code. Then, even though this is a much faster virus than most of them, we still are going to get our regular guys, like the cold protection, a little bit of heat protection, and of course drug protection. That way we can make sure that our guys are able to do everything they need to do. They're starting to spread to more countries, and we might as well also get some genetic hardening, just to make sure that we really will have enough time to deal with all the stuff we need to. Once we get all of those two, you also will see another grayed out thing, which is drug immunity. And that basically makes our nanobots immune to the cure for several weeks, but it will also increase susceptibility in the long run, so we have to finish this fast. And finally, as I say that, we hit Greenland. Thank you. I was so worried about that because so many of the other islands got hit up, but Greenland, I was really scared that they were about to close their ports, and they probably are in a second. But we actually got multiple ships sent over there. That's kind of insane luck. So thankfully, we were able to do this. Now it's just time to solely focus on getting a little bit more infectivity so we can make sure that. That Greenland is infected enough before we start killing them with things like total organ failure and yeah just go about that. Finally at this point it's just between us and how fast they can make the cure so we'll also take some genetic reshuffles and as long as we have enough DNA to get a few of those there's no way for humanity to win so this should be another victory. This is definitely one of the more stressful plagues because you have to do everything so fast and it's very easy to make a mistake. But as long as we stick with the plan, it shouldn't be too much of a problem as you saw right there. So we'll also go take the rest of the symptoms just to make sure we can kill people as fast as possible. And finally, that's going to be it. We killed the world and now it's time to go on to the bioweapon. The bioweapon is really similar to the nanovirus in that it was created in a lab and accidentally released. And this is the final standard plague in the original game, but obviously we still have two more special ones afterwards. The unique ability of this plague is its lethality exponentially increases over time, so it's really easy to get detected if you aren't careful about that. 
Obviously though, there are a few special abilities to lower its lethality that we'll end up using so we don't get detected too early. Now for our genetic code, we'll be using ATP Boost, Genetic Mimic, Aquasite, Herbophile, and Pathostasis, so pretty much the exact same thing as Nanovirus, except we're making the ability cost not increase instead of the symptom costs. This is a pretty standard start though right at the beginning. Our lethality isn't even up yet, so we can just focus on getting a couple of symptoms that will increase our infectability, and yep, kinda just hang it out until something bad happens. And the thing about lethality is even if we do kill a couple people, scientists still aren't going to create a cure right away. I mean, they don't have the knowledge that we do about how bad this thing really is. So yeah, until we kill a bunch of people, lethality isn't the biggest thing in the world. It just is something to watch out for and something that we don't necessarily want, especially this early on. But I mean, that's kind of just how the bioweapon works. It's another way to challenge you and make you deal with that obstacle. And speaking about lethality, it's finally started. So you will see that our death counter is slowly going up. Our infected counter is obviously going up a lot more, especially with that nice burst of all those guys. So I really do appreciate that. We're starting to infect people a lot faster. The boats are going to go out, especially because now we're getting the abilities like air travel and boat travel. But for this one, we only want air travel one and we're going to get boat travel two because it's another one where it's really just Greenland that we're worried about. Most of the other countries should be fine. Then as soon as we get done with getting water two in just a little bit, there are going to be three abilities that we want to immediately get. There's gene compression, which would reduces the likelihood of lethal genes becoming unlocked over time, deactivate modified genes which reduces your lethality, and nucleic acid neutralization which resets the lethal potential of the bioweapon. So these are how we're going to keep our plague under wraps for just a little bit longer. And you might also notice that those three abilities look like they're leading towards one ability because they are. Basically, once you get all three versions of all three abilities, we can unlock the Annihilate Gene, which raises our lethality to the absolute maximum. Obviously, we still have some infecting to do before we get there, but trust me, it's gonna be nice. For now though, as we wait to infect people, you already know what we're getting. We gotta get Drug Resistance 2, we gotta get Cold Resistance 2, a little bit of Heat Resistance, and also some Genetic Hardening to make sure they're not able to get this cure fast enough, because that is going to be something we're a little bit scared about. Especially because we still have places to infect, There's the Caribbean, there's Greenland, there's a few places that we're just hoping we can get some boats over to. But we will get all the upgrades of those three abilities, so we're able to use the Annihilate Gene as soon as we need to. Pretty quickly though, we did get Greenland, which is really nice, and here I'm going to use a little thing, I actually have to touch the world first, but then we can see what countries haven't been infected yet. I'm pretty sure that's actually the first time that I've ever used that, <laughs> because normally we're just hoping things work out well, but we can see that there are a few places that need to get infected, they probably have at this point. We do have global research focused on the cure so we will be using all of our saved up dna points in just a little bit but we really want to make sure we can get people infected and now we'll go for some insomnia stuff like that some paralysis get down their research speed which does use a lot of our dna and all we have to worry about now is getting that annihilate gene which we should have enough dna for we're just waiting for people to get infected norway's beginning to break down and yeah things are not going well for the human population especially because we have so many people infected our deaths are happening really slowly though but that is going to change very quickly. The last defense of the world at this point now though is Morocco. Now I probably am a bit more safe about this than I need to be. We probably could use the Annihilate Gene fairly quickly, but I really want to make sure that enough people are infected because I have lost runs to just being done before. Once they make it to the couple of millions though, that's when we're going to use it. And you can see that the death counter is rising exponentially, but also the cure counter is getting there. Thankfully we have enough points for a genetic reshuffle, which will get rid of some of their percent. Percentage. And yeah, at this point, everyone's realizing, wow, we are dropping like flies. They're thinking that maybe there's something they can do about it. I can only imagine how frustrating it is for the scientists when they almost have the cure and then we use a genetic reshuffle and they're like, how did this even happen? That doesn't make sense. Sorry, guys, I'm just playing with your lives. Next, it's time for the simian flu. And you'll see I'm pausing for a second right here since I need to pull up my notes. These next two plagues are by far the longest ones in the game. So it's a bit of extra insurance to remember everything I need. And right away, you'll notice that for this plague, instead of starting in Saudi Arabia, we start in Central Africa. And that's because, at least according to the guide I've been using, Saudi Arabia is just too unreliable for this plague. Which, by the way, for a lot of these plagues, I learned my strategies from other speedrunners. But some of them, since we wanted to be really consistent, I instead went and checked out some Steam guides. All the Steam guides I've been using have been from Tatsuro, and I'll have them in the description. But according to them, Africa is just a bit better, since it gives us a better ability to deal with North America, Central America, South America, and the island countries. 
It'll especially come into play once Genesis starts making some more research labs, but that's something I'll get into once we get there. Now as for the actual plague, the simian flu is based on the virus in Rise of the Planets of the Apes, where it's lethal to humans but causes ape intelligence to rise. Because of this, our goal is to spread the plague to as many apes as possible first, and then we'll use them to crush all the humans. For our genes, we have Metabolic Jump, which gives us more DNA when popping red bubbles, Ion Surge, which makes things cost less to devolve and makes the plague easier to cure, Together Strong, which increases DNA from colonies, and then Aquasite and Extremophile. But onto our strategy, you'll see that we're setting up an ape colony. Basically, this is where intelligent apes come together to build a colony, which increases ape transmission while protecting and generating DNA. This is what we got that one gene for, Together Strong, and we're also going to upgrade this as much as possible just to make sure we're always getting more DNA. Eventually, once we finish a bit more setup, we'll have five of these colonies all generating DNA, and yeah, it'll be really nice once you see it. Really quick before that though, we want to get intergenous dissemination, which increases the chance of the virus spreading between apes, blood gift, which increases ape to ape transmission if their blood is mixed, and sebaceous excretion, which makes prolonged physical contact trigger ape to ape transmission. We're getting these right now because we need enough intelligent apes to occupy a country before we can create an ape colony. And these transmission types are the main way we can do that. Now one thing to watch out for during this section is bad mutations. Basically any mutation that causes our lethality to rise, we need to immediately devolve, otherwise humans will figure us out too soon. And secondly, we also don't want neural enhancement because it increases intelligence in humans. Yeah, there's actually a symptom in this plague that only hurts us, doesn't help us at all. But we're on to placing ape colonies, which start out pretty cheap, but each time we set one down, the next one will be exponentially more expensive. These are 100% worth it though, since they give us a ton of DNA, and they'll be generating DNA for us for the entire game. I'm not exactly sure how the DNA works for these, but I'm pretty sure it's either how long they've been set down, or how many apes are in that colony, decides how much DNA we get. Since you'll see the two ones we just got, they're only giving us 6, while the one we've had down for a while is giving us 13. But we're relatively under the radar right now, I don't know how scientists don't think of us as more of a problem, especially because we did take down one of their last but you know, they're doubting the apes, they're gonna come to regret that very much. Is that something similar that happened in the movie? I've actually never watched it. I mean, it has a fun plague, but is it a good movie? Tell me in the comments. Next up, it's time for some more abilities, starting with Primal Awareness, which allows apes to understand human behaviors more, War Paint, which lets apes use natural dyes to paint themselves, and Covert Expertise, which lets apes monitor human incursions into their territory and camouflage their homes. All of these are so they're less likely to get noticed by humans. We still somehow don't have anyone who's noticed all these intelligent apes, and we want to keep it that way for as long as possible. Now at this point, we have a ton of DNA constantly coming in, so it's time to expand. You'll notice I haven't gotten any air or sea transmission, and that's because we don't need it. Here we'll get organized travel, which allows us to move a group of apes to a new country, logistics, which allows them to go faster and over large distances, and seafaring, which lets them build rafts to go over large bodies of water. We'll also get Ape Rampage, which can target labs and rescue captive apes. This will be used when Genesis, the company behind the lab that we broke out of at the beginning of the game, starts making more labs. So we'll need this to stop them from developing a cure. Now for moving our apes, it does cost 5 DNA to do so, so it's a little expensive expensive, especially if you're doing a lot. But the main reason we need it for is of course to go over to South America, and that will get it everywhere in both North and South America, and then we'll use it on islands. You'll also notice that I'm not using it on a place with an ape colony, and that's because it would move the ape colony, making us not get some points during that duration that they're moving. But we might need to move some of our ape colonies later, because sometimes countries send down drones to attack your apes, and if we keep a colony there, it'll get destroyed, but you'll see what I'm talking about later. Now you probably saw Genesis put down another lab. Thank Thankfully, we already had a bunch of apes there, so right away we can use our abilities to start attacking that. I'm also, of course, going to get our regular upgrades, get our cold resistance, get our drug resistance. You already know we need that if we're trying to spread everywhere. We can see that also there is now another lab, and we will actually have to send some apes over there to make sure we can deal with those guys. And yeah, from here on out, the cure has started. So Genesis is going to make a bunch of these labs, but as soon as we see them, we do want to destroy them. Now that is kind of hard, especially because the labs, they're not the biggest things in the world 
they're easy to miss. So I'm just constantly scanning the map and making sure if we do see a lab, we get it. One thing that can happen though, is a lab sometimes spawns on the same country where you have an ape colony and the ape colony symbol will go over the lab symbol. So we're really hoping that doesn't happen. Otherwise we would have no idea where that lab is. Now the public doesn't like us destroying these labs, especially because they definitely know about us now, but it is more worth it for us to destroy them and not allow their experiments to keep going rather than not terrify the people. I mean, we're going to be killing them anyways. Who cares if they're scared for now? You're also probably starting to notice that more than any other plague, the cost for upgrades are absolutely insane. They're getting close to the hundreds at this point, and most of the time you actually will have to buy things for hundreds of DNA points. That is why it's so important to have our different ape colonies, so we're constantly getting money, because it really does scale fast. But finally, we just need to focus on drug resistance too, and genetic hardening too, and then we can finally start doing some transmission and some symptoms, so we are getting there. You know, I gotta go back and play this game casually again after this. Like the casual difficulty versus the mega brutal difficulty, it's just night and day. You don't need this many drug resistances or any of that. It's just a completely different game. And one thing I didn't even notice for a second, someone finally did send out drones to try to attack our apes. You'll see it as soon as we go back to the map. It's basically the red plane circling around in the blue circle. That's where they're sending people to try to kill our apes and control them. Unfortunately for them, they picked the wrong spot. They didn't even go near one of of our ape colonies. Kind of not the best strategy in the world, but I guess to be fair, I have this entire map. They can only kind of see what's happening. Still, there are probably better ways to deal with this, and that definitely will be their downfall. Now at this point, we're really focusing on getting our transmission up, and still, you know, the general things. The game really wants me to have neural enhancement, but I don't want to make humans smarter. I'm not sure why it's trying this so hard. And I also didn't have enough DNA for a second. That could have been bad, but unfortunately for the humans, they're not keeping their smarts for too long. Anyways, we're getting plenty of different forms of transmission right now, just kind of building up our infectability because our next perk that we're going to get might be the most powerful thing in this plague. It's called Hominity Bridge. I don't know if I said that right, but basically it allows the ape and human forms of the virus to efficiently jump between species, which is kind of insane and very good for the apes. And that's why you'll also see we get a ton of red bubbles, a ton of new countries are infected, and here's where things are really going to get interesting. We're getting so many red bubbles at this point that I literally have to pause the screen because we would not have enough time to click these. Even if I was on the phone, I'm not sure if I could with both of my thumbs. That's how good this is. And it's especially nice when you save it for this late because we get so much DNA, even though we use almost all of it on our sixth and final ape colony. We do want to get some extra points, especially because things are really starting to get expensive before we get some air and some water transmission. Because even though we can send our apes overseas, we still would rather them go naturally and we have the time it's not like we're rushing too much the only thing I have to 100% make sure is anytime there's a lab, we crush it immediately. At this point, because of how fast the cure is coming, if we miss a single lab for more than like five seconds, that could be the end of the run. So that's really what I'm focused on. Now we're at the point where we might as well go all the way up to extreme bio aerosol, because although I don't expect places like Greenland to be hit naturally, it would be nice. But this definitely is a calm before the storm type moment, since in just a little bit, we'll want to finally start the lethality up. But but we gotta be patient and this is definitely a slow moving plague. Also, I shouldn't be complaining, but who's ever controlling these drones is the worst at their job. They have not gotten even close to my ape colonies. Do they even know where we started this thing? Anyways, at this point, what I'm going to do is look on my map and you can actually see which countries are still healthy. So then we can send those with our ability and make sure that every country gets hit before going on from there. So I'm just going to aim at each of these countries, send some apes over. They might take a little bit to get there. Some of these guys are also hard to hit just because they're so small on the map, I guess we could zoom in. Oh, but yeah, that's not fun. So basically right there, Australia doesn't have enough apes, so we can't send anyone over. So we're gonna have to send them from Africa instead. And that's especially bad because you'll see right there, a research center is starting in New Zealand and it's gonna take a while for our apes to get there. We're also getting some lethality. I don't even know when we got this much. I guess at this point, you know what? It is what it is. I'm just gonna start buying some stuff, hoping that it works out, especially because this lab is literally in the worst spot and I don't have anyone I can send over. I'm a little bit worried about that. We can be happy though, because some countries like Germany are starting to break down and it looks like Gensis for some reason decided to leave New Zealand where they were safe. They definitely could have developed a cure, but instead of staying there, 
they moved their lab to a place that's going to get destroyed immediately. It wasn't even a contest. It's like they want us to win. You know, if these are our best scientists, I don't think they're ever going to survive. But we'll send some more people over. I just need to get this started. Greenland also does not look the best. They have just started a lab themselves. Thankfully, there are still enough apes there, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem to take out. Maybe just take a little longer. It is a little concerning, though, because we definitely have to start killing people so we can stop this research. The research getting a little insane so we will do a genetic reshuffle which costs an arm and a leg that was so expensive that was ridiculous and it's not letting me hit that but that's because they're moving i don't even know what the point of moving is i have this entire globe shut down dude you just got to accept your fate at this point but we will send some more apes over to greenland hopefully that will help them a bit and at this point i think it probably is time to start getting some lethality so yeah, I think I'll just pick one of these options. We'll hope that'll be good enough. And we really got to start dealing with these humans. Actually, never mind. The cure's pretty much dead. Well, let's infect some people. I kind of am worried about two places though. It's New Zealand and it's Greenland. Greenland does look a little bit better than New Zealand, but we only have 60 people infected and more dead. So we might be a little bit too lethal. I'll kind of play it out for just a little bit. Maybe we'll get some more transmission, see if that can help them at all. But yeah, this is not the best in the world. So I think it's time to do it. I gotta devolve some of my lethal symptoms. The nice thing is I don't think the cure is going to come back, so we should be fine on that. I'm just hoping we'll get enough DNA to still be fine. I mean, at this point, it does look like New Zealand is getting a lot more victims, so that is good. But yeah, it's just a worrisome thing. It's so easy to mess this up, and if I mess this up right at the ending of this, I really don't want to lose the speed run. Also, that's great, because we just saw a message that said that Greenland executed all of its infected people not a great thing for us so i think we will have to send some people over there are literally zero people infected there right now that is not great and they're still sending bombs i don't know who they're trying to hit at this point but i guess we'll just try to send some more apes i don't know if we do have more apes there i'm pretty sure we do but this is very annoying so we will send them from two different countries because i think at this point new zealand should be fine it really is just about greenland why even on the ones where i can send people to greenland why is greenland always the place that is the most struggle for me don't worry though we are going to get our revenge on this next plague. If we can make it there, we have to make it there first. So I'm going to go into the transmissions again. We'll get a couple of these. We do have the extra DNA. We don't have to worry at all about them developing a cure. The only thing we really have to worry about is these planes who keep trying to kill all of our apes. This is super annoying. I mean, to be fair, this is the last land of living people, so I can't really blame them too much. But like, come on, man, just accept your fate. It's not going to be the worst thing in the world. So I am going to go to every country I I can or I guess not every but a bunch of countries and we are going to send apes from literally everywhere this is going to be our final stand against Greenland I'm not sure if the apes can die like the zombies if they don't have enough to eat I would assume not because it's not like they're eating the people they're just trying to take them out but this is actually terrifying imagine looking at this being in Greenland and a bunch of apes on rafts just come towards your country you're like please we're the last bits of humanity we have to hold out but this is the last thing you see before you die and why is the plane trying to attack South America? That doesn't make sense, but we won. Thank you. Finally, time for the very last plague. And this one's going to be the Shadow Plague, where we control a vampire who's trying to turn everybody into his minions. For our genetic code, we have Harvester, which makes vampires collect more DNA when consuming people with Blood Rage, Budget Bat, which makes our flight ability not cost DNA, Mad Scientist, which makes all bubbles automatically pop, and then Herbophile and Aquasite. Then for our beginning strategy, we're starting straight out in Greenland and killing everybody in the country. I told you guys we'd be getting our revenge on these guys, and it's a pretty sweet one since it allows us to gain DNA while we take people out, and basically we're waiting for the Templars to start fighting back. Now at the beginning of this run, I really only have a couple vampire abilities I care about. There are upgrades for our Blood Rage ability, which makes our vampire more powerful, Dark Ritual, which makes it so that if we're not getting attacked during a Blood Rage, we heal ourselves by feeding on people, and Therianthrope, which gives us the ability to turn into a bat and fly to other countries. And there we go. In just about 30 seconds flat, we did take out Greenland, which is awesome. We no longer have to deal with your ports. That's 
what you get, guys. After that, we're gonna go for Iceland. We don't really expect to take them out fully. Instead, we're just kind of biding our time until the Templars start setting up bases. By the way, don't worry, not all countries are gonna be as easy to take out as Greenland was. The biggest reason is they just don't have the biggest population, so it didn't take us that long. But finally, after waiting for just a bit longer, you'll see that the Templars are finally starting to set up bases, and we got some pretty good positions. Preferably, we'd want them all to be in the east or all to be in the west, but that's really unlikely. So even though they're kind of scattered, I definitely will take this formation, and it's time to go for them. We want to take them out as soon as possible, because the longer we wait, the stronger they're going to get. And also, if we try to set up a vampire layer while they're here, they're just going to destroy it. But the Templar bases are set up in a way where the first one you destroy is really easy, but then they start moving some of their units to different bases and make those ones stronger. So that one takes us literally like a second. We're going to heal up in this other country, and we go for the second one. We'll also get Demonic Fury, which is going to make our vampire as strong as possible, and they are already dead. But again, they're sending airplanes over to different places. So yeah, that's just kind of the game we have to play. And honestly, this collection of these four bases is really nice. They're really close to each other. And we'll go for the one in Botswana first. We'll take care of the south and then the north. One thing to pay attention to during this, by the way, is every time we use Blood Fury, it does cost us some DNA. Obviously, we get DNA back when we use it. But I have had times before where I get an upgrade, try to go use Blood Fury on something else, and lose all of my DNA, which just makes us lose. It's really funny but this has actually happened to me multiple times when I'm practicing, and yeah, it is not a cool thing. So I'm making sure that doesn't happen. I'm always going to make sure I have more than enough DNA before I do any upgrades, at least during this part. And here we go. We'll do some Madagascar. Only have two Templar bases left after that one, but they are getting a lot stronger. They're taking a lot more of our HP now. So here's where we're going to use the cheesiest strategy in the world. You almost feel a little bit bad about using this, but then you remember, hey, I'm trying to take over the world. I can't feel bad. Basically, we're going to get them low and our own HP low, but before we die, we're actually going to move our vampire over. You can see that vampire is close to death after that, so I'm going to move him before he dies. We can heal up in this other country and then go back to the original country where there is going to be this base, use it one more time, and they are not able to heal up at the same rate that we can, so we completely take them out. I'm also going to get some more bat speed. We might as well get it, especially because after we're done with this Templar base, we're going to be setting up a ton of layers, and that will be really important for the next phase of this plague. But we're using the exact same strategy this time once we make it to the final Templar base. It is extremely hard to do and I'm also playing it fairly safe because we're not going to get another message that says we're close to death. So instead of going too low on my health we'll just be at an okay level and it might take us a little bit longer but I need to play this safe. So at this point we just have a little bit more we have to do. We'll send our person back get him a tiny more health and you can see they are very weak I maybe could have finished them off with that last one but as I was saying gotta play it safe now all the Templar forces are gone and we can start investing in layers as well as get some more travel speed I think that will come important and now it's time to put down all of our layers the first one is going to be over here in Africa and we're going to put it as west as possible in Africa because that's going to be a good first spot before we go over to the Americas and more specifically go over to Central America now it's important to put all of our layers in really strategic positions first of all they give us more DNA which is always nice but the second thing they're good for is shadow portals once we get the shadow portal upgrade we can then teleport from one place to the other as long as there's a layer there so it's actually super OP and that's why we want to have five layers down all in really good spots again we wanted to wait to put them down until now because if we did it earlier the Templars would have taken them out pretty much just losing us a bunch of DNA because the layers are really similar to the ape colonies and every time you place a new one it's going to get exponentially more expensive but for our third layer we are going to place it in Central Europe that'll help us get pretty much everywhere in Europe so it's a nice spot and then we'll head over to China to place our fourth layer, just allowing us to travel a little bit more eastwards. You'll see I am taking little breaks here and there just to make sure we can get some more DNA. But yeah, just the general plan, place some more layers. And finally, we're going to be heading over to Australia, where our last one's going to be. That'll allow us to go both to Australia and be really close to all the different places by it. And the reason we want all these strategic teleporting places is not just so we can spread the plague really easily. 
but also so that anytime there's a base starting to develop the cure, we're able to take it out immediately. But you will notice the cure is still at 0%, and that's because we actually haven't started a plague yet. Sure, we've been a vampire attacking people and terrorizing them, but there's nothing they can cure. And that's why for the next little bit, we're just going to be grinding up DNA. That way we can get tons of abilities at once, and you'll see what I'm talking about in a bit. So I'm just going to talk about random stuff for the next two and a half minutes. Starting with, first of all, just want to make sure you all know you are loved and you are cared about. Even if you don't think there are, there are people on this planet that truly do love you and you make their lives better. And you know, those people you do love, make sure you give them a call. Let them know how much you appreciate them. And yeah, just wanted to quickly say that. I know people probably weren't expecting this from a random play gang speedrun. But now onto a less serious topic. Have you ever thought about how our memories can be manufactured? Well, not really manufactured, but to give you an example, when I was just a kid, when I was two years old, we got a dog named Lucky. But this was totally by chance. Apparently, as the story goes, I was in the car with my dad, my brother, my mom, my little sister Cassie wasn't born at this time, and we saw a dog on the street. So my dad got out of the car, went and picked her up, brought her in the car, and then we decided to take care of her. Of course, we put around flyers trying to find out if anybody lost their dog, but nobody ever came to, so we took her in and she was now our dog. Now, I was only two. I am physically unable to remember this happening, but I have been told this story so many times and I have told my friends friends this story so many times that I have vivid memories of it. In my mind, I can see my dad jumping out of the car, going and grabbing Lucky, dodging cars left and right, coming past him. And is that how it went? Probably not at all. The ways I think it happened are probably very different from how it did. But because I've been told about this memory so many times, I now remember it. It is a core memory for me, but it's not really a memory. It's like a fake memory. I don't know. It's just something really weird. And I have plenty of these, especially from my younger years where it's weird. It is a memory, but it's like a memory of somebody else his memory that they transferred and then you went and filled in the details and that's how you came up with the story just something i wanted to bring up tell me your thoughts in the comments hopefully that made sense to like literally anybody and speaking of memories do you ever just randomly remember smells one time i was on vacation with my family and i remember at the front desk they always had this hard candy that had a very particular smell and taste it wasn't like the best thing in the world but i remember it being good and i have never seen that candy again i'm not sure what it's called not sure where you get it i just remember it was a thing but every once in a while i'm just going around my normal life and immediately i'm like it's that candy where is it but i never see the candy it's not anywhere near me i just randomly remember the smell for literally like half a second my brain decided hey you're gonna get this small hit of dopamine and then we're gonna make you extremely sad i don't know why my brain does this it's kind of a weird thing to do not sure why you're being so rude but there is nothing more that i want to do than find out what that candy was like i said it's it's not even that good, not even my favorite candy. But at this point, it's so nostalgic for me. And every couple of years, I get that smell. I'm like, is that the candy? And then it's nowhere in sight. Maybe it's been under my nose this whole time, but I don't know, man. But all right, that's enough random gibberish. Time to get back to the run since we're almost at the point where we can unleash the plague. Unless you kind of enjoyed my talking. If you did, thanks. I just like talking, as you can probably see from all my videos on this channel. But anyways, our main goal for this entire waiting section was to get up to around 420 DNA points. That way we can buy everything we need at the same time and destroy humanity really quickly from here on. Our first symptom we need is called Shadow Blessing, which basically starts our plague out and allows us to start subjugating humanity. Then from there we get a few more symptoms in this line, all increasing infectivity until we can buy shadow slaves which causes severe behavioral abnormities and permanent psychosis. Now we don't have to kill everybody, as long as we infect them, we win. Then with those things gotten, we can get blood gift which makes our vampire visit hundreds of humans every night to infect them, all the way down to corrupted air which now allows us to infect millions of humans every single day. And we'll also get some layer healing just to keep us safe. Then it's on to transmission where we'll get droplets 1 and 2, fomites 1 and 2, air 1 and 2, water 1 and 2, and extreme bioaerosol, so now we'll infect tons of people constantly. Then after that, it's time for cold tolerance, antibiotic tolerance, and heat tolerance, though we didn't have enough DNA for heat tolerance, so oops. But still, we're in a really good place and can get it a bit later. We also upgraded so fast right there that I didn't even have time to explain it while we we're doing it. But as you can see, we are now extremely lethal. Once we go to a country, pretty much everybody in that country is going to get infected. But there's where we'll get heat tolerance. And we might as well get zoonotic shift, which allows for cross species infection. And then bat one, dog one, and wolf one. So all of those guys will help us with infecting humanity. So at this point, the humans are probably very much regretting just a 
allowing me to chill out in Central Europe, they were like, hey, it's not my problem. Now it's going to be everybody's problem because we infect these countries extremely fast. But there are going to be a lot of people who are trying to make cures. Unluckily for them, as soon as we show up to one of those countries, we pretty much destroy them. And especially because I have all these places I can teleport to, they can try to create some countries. They aren't really going to help as long as I'm just staying on top of my gain. We go right here and we can get four countries in the world, get rid of four of those labs, and we extremely slow down the cure progress. And it's going to be similar to other ones where they get all these labs, where as long as we get one of the countries done for, they can no longer start working on a cure. So yeah, we're just trying to deal with them as soon as they show up and we'll deal with the other guys later. But it looks like Africa really hasn't been affected much at all. So we definitely want to go over there before we go to Japan and deal with their cure progress, because hopefully from there, we'll get a lot more people just naturally getting infected, as well as we can get some more transmission because we have so many DNA points. And yeah, we're pretty much just dealing with the rest of the people. There's not much they can do at this point. I understand why they're trying to fight back, but you know, look at this map. It's not really going to help you. At this point, it's pretty much just the hard to reach places that we got to get like Madagascar, pretty much for most of these ones where we're actually able to move around. Madagascar is always a problem. They're just kind of annoying. And the Philippines, the Philippines is hard to notice on this map. It's usually just the islands because when you're attached to other countries, it's really easy to see what's purple and what isn't. But anyways, I think that is all the islands. So time to deal with everybody else. You know, I get it. It must be such a sad existence being the only ones not under my rule. So don't worry, I will deal with you. We'll also check, make sure that every Everybody is not healthy and that means there we go we took care of the entire world and that's where we're going to call off time 10346 which is not only going to be a world record for the old plagues on mega brutal difficulty but it's also going to be a world record for the shadow plague i'll take it all right subscribe if you enjoyed bye